Her 16-year-old son, Antoine Duplessis, has a history of getting in trouble on the street and at school. One time, um, I walked into school at 8 o'clock, and I, I got I kicked out of school at 8.29. I got sent home. Antoine, who's old enough to be in 11th grade, is way behind. He's in 8th grade. As an 8th grader, he'd normally attend this school with his 13-year-old sister. I don't want my 16-year-old in an elementary school with my 13-year-old. He's too old. He's too big. I don't want any 16-year-olds in the school with my little 13-year-old. That's how things happen. Vallis agrees. That's why Antoine is a student here at Booker T. Washington, a special school Vallis set up for overage eighth graders. It, it would make sense to put the 16 and 17 year olds who are reading at the fourth grade reading level to ability group them rather than the, to keep a 16 and 17 year old in a, in a fifth or sixth or seventh grade class. At Booker T, most of the day is spent preparing students for the mandatory state LEAP test which they must pass to move on to the ninth grade. But teaching to students who have failed repeatedly presents its own set of problems. A lot of the students tend to get jaded. You've experienced failure for so many times that there's a point of where you just accept it's not worth even trying. So alliteration, like I said, it's a poetic device. It repeats the same beginning. Jeffrey Berman is Antoine's English teacher. So. Marvelous Mary made magnificent mud pies. They all start with M, right? Yeah. All right, I want you guys all, I want you all to make one for yourself. It's make hard it words, to get right? this age group interested in material that is traditionally intended for possibly a younger audience. That's probably the biggest challenge, is getting them interested in the stuff that normally, like, they might give the response, this is baby stuff, why am I doing this? Well, let Antoine then you will, all right? Yeah. Active Antoine edition all day and all night. Active Antoine auditioned all day and all night. That's perfect. I like it. Teachers also complain they're not equipped to teach students who are so far behind. I teach math for kids who are in like first through third grade level, but I have eighth grade books, and those are the only books I have. Well, these kids aren't anywhere close to eighth grade. There's this big gap of knowledge. So if I had fifth grade books, fourth grade books, you know, I might, I might be able to handle it a lot better. First-year math teacher Luke Stratner says students and teachers have concerns about the purpose of Booker T. Most of the students here say this is just a prison, a detention center, and they don't look at it like this is a school. Sometimes it feels like they just put all the kids who are troubled to other schools here. You gotta listen until you calm down because you're not going to have to talk to anybody right now. Vallis denies that Booker T is a warehouse for failing students. For one thing, he says, given the number of kids who are behind in the district, it's too small. That's kind of hard to do when 85% of your kids are two years or more below grade level. So, you know, you, yeah, you have to exile a lot of kids. Andre, come here, Andre. Oh, I do No, come here, Andre. You are taking a quiz. Vallis says he's aware of the problems with the school, and so he's hired a private company, Camelot, to help run Booker T. Camelot currently runs educational programs in eight states. While he was superintendent in Philadelphia, Vallis contracted with the company to run three alternative schools there. Camelot will do a far superior job than this district has ever done managing uh, a very challenged population. They have a whole instructional strategy that's designed to address the academic deficiencies that the children experience. Oh, no! No, please, come on! For students in traditional schools who need to catch up, Vallis has added an after-school program called Credit Recovery. You know, you can't end the school day at 315 and expect to close the gap when you've got kids who are two, three, four years below grade level. It's just, it's impossible to do. But on the days we visited, the after-school classes were mostly empty. Vallis says it's still early and that problems will be solved. But will changes come soon enough for Antoine he worries that his temper could erupt any time, leaving him out on the street again, expelled from school. All I can say is I hope I can stay in school. I'm going to try my best to stay in school. But if anything happens, like if somebody do me something, I can't change the way I, I react. I'm going to react the same way anytime.
according to his English teacher. Antoine hasn't been in class since just before the winter break. Brittany Jackson is still in school, but she's worried. The exit exam she must take to graduate is given in February. She's already passed math and English, but the science section has given her trouble. I think I took this test 14 times and failed it. I don't know if it's my test taking skills or is it that I freeze up when I take the test. But I don't understand how I just, you know, how a person could fail their leave test all the time. Faced with all of these challenges, even Paul Vallis sometimes has bad days. If I'm having a bad day, it's usually for a good reason, and that just means I have to intensify my efforts. We've got a steep hill to climb. You know, also, we are moving fast. We're moving fast because there is a sense of urgency here. Vallis's plans for next year are already taking shape. The school day will be longer for all students, and Vallis will open a privately run network of schools for overage students and those with behavioral problems. John will continue to follow up on both the New Orleans and D.C. school stories.